Okay, welcome to After Effects, these training tutorials part two. Obviously, it's After Effects, right? So we want to start learning how to do some sweet stuff, animation, motion graphics, and special effects. And so that's what After Effects is for. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Now, if you're coming from the first video, you probably got a tour around the user interface. If you're still unfamiliar with After Effects, go ahead and take a look at this video right here. And this will give you a quick tour around After Effects, kind of get you situated. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's create a new composition down here. We're going to do an HD comp, about five seconds long. And if you take a look up here at the top, there's this little square button, the rectangle tool. If you hold down on it, there's some more shapes. We're going to do the rectangle tool. And if you don't have a layer in your timeline and you use the rectangle tool, normally this is used for making a mask on top of a layer. But if you don't have a layer, you're not highlighting a layer. When you click and use it, it'll actually create a shape layer. And you can see that down here in the bottom. And so a shape layer, you can change the colors of the, of the fill here. You can adjust the stroke. And so you can put a border on it and that kind of thing. And so shape layers are kind of a nice way to kind of get started. You can use those um, as, as elements right inside of After Effects. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do. If you look down here, there's this little arrow that toggles down on the layers. And this arrow will reveal and kind of show all the different parameters in that layer that you can adjust. The transform area right here is where some of the more important things are held. Um, every layer will have these transform options. And you, if you see on here on the side, there's these yellow numbers. And each of these correspond to these different elements. And so you can actually change the position from, from the side down here using these numbers. So I can change the scale of the object, I can rotate the object, and I can even change the opacity or the transparency of the object. Okay, so animating inside After Effects, all of that has to do with uh, this stopwatch right here on the side. The stopwatch is the key to animating with, within After Effects. So let's say, for example, that I want to take this square. I'll move this and make it a little smaller here. And I wanted to move it across the frame over time. And so what you would do is first you would turn on the stopwatch, and you'll see that this little yellow diamond appeared right here. That's a keyframe. And so what that means is that at this point in time, these parameters are recorded. Now if I move forward in time, and then I move my object, my square, somewhere, you'll see it creates another keyframe. So whenever this stopwatch is clicked, it'll automatically create keyframes whenever you move that object. If I were to go here in the middle, and I move this object up, you'll see that it'll create a path over time. Okay. So right here we can go ahead and take a look um, at this animation. It's pretty basic, but if you do a RAM preview, just a very straightforward uh, animation. Nothing too exciting or anything like that. Nothing to freak out about, but we are going to freak out about something. So um, if we take a look over here, we've got the motion blur effect. Okay, Turning, Clicking this button turns on motion blur for your entire project, but you still need to go through each layer and turn it on for each layer. Okay, So the reason for that is if you have a lot of layers going on, you can click those different layers and have motion blur applied, but if your computer starts to bog down, you can click motion blur and turn it off for the entire project or turn it back on again. And so you'll notice the difference here. If you do a RAM preview, see how there's a little bit of a blur that goes on behind the square there? You can see the difference right here if I turn that on and off. It's really sharp and then this adds a little bit of motion blur. And that's going to be even more exaggerated if the animation is faster and you can see that motion blur is pretty quick. Okay. Now we still have the problem that this animation is um, kind of bland. Uh, it definitely kind of has a really hard stop and then it just stands there. Okay, And so one of the things that you can do is you can change the types of keyframes. So if you highlight these, right click, keyframe assistant, and then you'll see easy ease. What this does, it'll change the keyframe shapes, but it also what it does is it allows the keyframe to have more of like a smooth start, being faster in the middle of the animation, and then a smooth stop. And you can see a difference here. There it goes. And see how it kind of has a smoother start and kind of moves and then slows down? It's a lot more smooth. Okay. So easy ease keyframes are something that you can do that's a, a really quick fix, make things look a lot nicer. But you can even go further than that. Okay. Now if I highlight these keyframes, you'll notice here this is the graph editor. And I click this, and you'll see here's the the uh, animation over time. Okay. If I go back and I change these keyframes to how they were before just linear keyframes. So I use this graph editor, you'll see it's a constant speed over time. 
but changing them to an easy ease curve when you take a look it starts out real smooth and it speeds up and then it slows down okay so you can manipulate this animation even more so if I click here on this keyframe you can see that there's these little tiny yellow things that allow me to adjust the angle of this keyframe so I can pull this over here and I can pull this even further and what we have is something that starts up really fast and then slows down. So let's take a look at that. So we can have an animation that zips in and slows down to a nice stop. Okay, and you can exaggerate this even more. It's all on your discretion. Pull this keyframe out. Keep that really exaggerated. And we'll take a look. A really nice slow stop okay so you can start to see how there's a lot more you can do than just using standard traditional keyframes especially if you go here into the graph editor you can start manipulating really how these things start to work keeping things really fluid and smooth and giving you kind of a lot more dynamic of a motion uh, motion motion blur also goes a long way in doing this so now let's go ahead and take a look at um, some things that we could use in kind of like a real-life situation so let's delete this okay and so let's imagine that we wanted to do you know some lower thirds so we have somebody doing an interview and we want something to pop up that says their name on it and we want to kind of you know put a little bit of motion in there and this is a good example to show you really kind of how you can get started on building some complex things so let's build a shape layer here maybe something about like this i'm going to take the stroke off and let's animate it so you can go down here to transform and find position or if all these things are toggled away and you just hit p it'll show up for position okay and so let's say about right here is where we want this to be totally in the frame we're going to start our stopwatch the keyframe appears we go to the beginning and now we can just simply move this object off the frame and you'll see it animates in okay and again that's just a really straightforward animation so let's go ahead and take this we're going to change this to an easy ease curve go to the graph editor and let's change this so it kind of has a really smooth finish Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at that and see if that's what we're looking for. Okay, that might be a little fast. Extend that keyframe out. Okay, cool, that's not bad. All right, so now we've got those keyframes set up. Kind of slides in like that. Let's take this layer, and if you hold down Command or Control D, you'll duplicate that layer. So we've got another copy of that layer sitting underneath it. Now. If I highlight these keyframes and I line up my time indicator with one of these keyframes, I can actually adjust the position without changing the animation. Okay, let's change this color so we can kind of see a little bit better what we're looking at. So now I've got that duplicate there, but it does the animations exactly the same. Okay, and what's kind of cool about duplicating it is I could offset the time on this, and so maybe we have. The first one kind of come in and the second one come in after it okay so it kind of has a cool little effect right i mean it's something kind of simple um and you could kind of start to see maybe how you could add some more complexity to this kind of stuff and, and insert some different elements that kind of thing this is simply using really only simply using the position that we're animating but you could animate from scale rotation or something else and kind of add some different effects going on inside of there so let's say okay that's kind of looking good what we're looking for now let's add some text Okay, well, I draw a little text box here that was using this T tool up at the top. Let's say, okay, Filmmaker Central. Okay, and we'll move this on here. Okay, looks like we need to move these things a little bit. Here's a quick tip if you want to find the keyframes, all the active keyframes on one of the layers you're using. Highlight the layers and then hit the key U. And that'll bring up all the keyframes for those layers. And so it looks like this is kind of small. It didn't give us a lot of space here. So I'm going to highlight all of these keyframes, line up with one of those keyframes, and then I'm going to use this parameter here to extend these over further. So I'm simply just moving more of this onto the frame, but I'm still keeping the animations that I have. And I'm going to delete that one and put it back in its place. Okay. Take a look. Okay, it's something. Now it comes in. Let's say we actually need to see the text after this stuff comes in, right? So let's say the box is animated out to about right here, and then we want to see Filmmaker Central show up about right there. Okay. 
So let's hit P for position. We're going to turn on the stopwatch, start a keyframe. Let's turn back to about right here. And we're going to move this up and off of that blue area. So essentially what we want to look like is that the filmmaker essential just kind of appear there. So we'll go over here, change these keyframes from a linear to an easy ease keyframe. And let's go back in the graph editor, do the same thing like we did before, kind of change this to be a little bit more dynamic and have more of an easy ease. So it starts off fast and slips in there. Let's turn on motion blur. Okay, so we're kind of getting like what we're looking for. Now it'd be sweet if the text only appears over the blue, right? We don't actually want to see it when it's on the black because this would be something we'd see in front of you know, an interview or something like that. So what we can do is take this Filmmaker Central text, just gonna right click on it, and then you're gonna go to Precompose, okay? And it's gonna say, okay, let's move all the attributes into this new composition. I'm gonna say, okay. So now that text layer was moved inside this composition. If you take a look, double click here, you can still see that same composition with that text layer. So essentially what we've done is created a new composition and we've put that text inside that new composition, okay? So anything we do and adjust here will show up as inside of this composition and we'll see it over on this side. And so what this lets you do is you could say, okay, we've got this thing animated. We can take this and using the square tool we had before, instead of using it to create a shape layer, like I mentioned, you can use this to create a mask. And so since this layer is highlighted, I can take this and create a mask on top of this composition. Okay, and so what what this will do is that animation will only play from within that mask, and so now we have something that kind of looks like you know lower thirds that kind of pops up, and you can see that thing animated in there. Okay, something kind of cool, something that you could probably use. Let's put the motion blur on there, so you could kind of maybe pop that up. Maybe that's somebody's name, you know, or something you're using in lower thirds. Really, this is we just wanted to use this as an example to show to you kind of how you can get started doing motion graphics. Obviously some things get more complex than this and especially if you have Illustrator, you can start to, to illustrate and, and make different pictures and images that you can animate inside After Effects. And that's really the start of motion graphics, okay? Now, what about effects? What about special effects or those kinds of things that you apply in, um, in live action footage? Well, if you go ahead and do, let's start over. Let's take a look at um, some footage here. So we've got this shot. We'll bring this down into a new comp. Okay, let's take a look here, see if we can find something. All right, so it's like, let's trim this here. We'll bring this down. Okay, power shot. All right, yep, she brings up the contacts. That's all we're looking for. Perfect, okay. All right, okay, cool. So. How can we apply some effects to some of this live footage? Well, all of the effects live up here. You can see the effects panel here and then a whole bunch of different categories. And you can add them as simply as you come up to maybe color correction and say, you know, exposure. You click that and you'll see it opens up in this new window. So here's the project window we had before and you'll see this window right here, effects controls. And then it's a lot of the same kind of things that you've seen throughout After Effects. Um, you can adjust different parameters here by changing some of these different things. Um, you can toggle down to see more information and even the effects themselves. Okay, so it's pretty simple. You can also see these same things in the timeline. You toggle down, you'll see now there's a thing for effects. You toggle that down, here's the exposure effect they're looking at. With all the same things that we can see here as they're up here as well. Okay, and so if you wanted to animate or change an effect over time, it's the same way we did that with the motion graphic example. So let's say we wanted to add um, a levels adjustment. Okay, if you've never seen a histogram before, this is kind of a color correction technique. Here's all the video data across um, the signal that we can see right here. And so by dragging these triangles around, we can manipulate some of that color information. So if I take this one, this is for the blacks, and I slide this, any of this color data that's beyond this triangle will turn black. And so I can even send this all the way up till, until everything's black. So this is a way you can kind of increase some contrast same thing with for this side, this is the whites. So I can push this down until suddenly everything turns white and start to manipulate an image that way. That's called adjusting levels. Um, but you can also do this in different channels. So I could take the red channel, for example, and I could start to clip the red channel only, which would result in the shadows turning blue. 
You can do the same thing with the top, which would actually result in the highlights turning white. So say we wanted to animate something like this over time. You could do that from up in here, but you could also do that from down here inside the timeline. You see the same thing here. Okay. So let's say we start up here, we hit our stopwatch, and then we go forward in time, and then we bring, you know, make some sort of adjustment. Okay. And you can see these two keyframes showed up because that stopwatch just hit, and you can see the same thing here, the stopwatch. And now over time, you can see that animation in that effect taking place. Okay, so pretty straightforward. So the same kind of things, principles apply in this as they did with the motion graphic example. I could still take these, change them to maybe an easy ease curve. Motion blur wouldn't necessarily apply as much because nothing's actually moving. It's just an effect changing over time. But now that effect will ease into it and then ease and slowly stop. Okay, and so this is this is really the beginning of it. This is how you can start um, in animating. And so if you want to go ahead and take a look at all the other effects, you can definitely learn a lot of really important things by just messing around and seeing what kind of effects are available there and, and be thinking about, hey, what kinds of things can I apply this for that maybe the effect really isn't actually built for. And by combining all those different effects together, you can really start to get some really powerful combinations. And there really are a lot. When you take a look at this, I mean, there's a lot of different effects that you know that you can go through here. So take a look look through each of these things and see you know what kind of things do these do so I hope this tutorial was helpful really definitely this is the fundamentals of animating and so once you start to understand this and the way After Effects likes to animate things it's really easy to start being more complex And so now maybe you've got some of the basic foundation to be able to go in and, and start to do some more complex things so I hope this was helpful we'll see you next time with the awkward comfort plus contacts <laughs>